Uh, we learned in the Mishnah that on the beginning of this parak uh, that um, in order to kaina to acquire the yavama, the Torah says you have to do you have to have intercourse, inter, uh, marital relations. But what's called marital relations? And we're going to learn that you don't need a full marital relations. According to some, uh, we're going to learn towards the sugya is that even just having his organ touch her organ that already is the is the that already is called like uh, bia considered bia and in fact this applies to arayas also you know the, all the arayas all the people prohibition um, that you, all the people that you're prohibited from marrying. And if you do, or if you're having relations with them, you could get Kores, Mrs. Bezden, or Alav. So what's called having relations with them? One thing leads into another. Okay, so we're going to start from the top of Nunhei Amar Aleph. Just uh, some house cleaning that the Gemara is describing, uh, fit, trying to get the rules in place of when a certain arayas apply. So the Gemara says, Alma, from, from the Mishnah we see, Achois Ishtoi, you're not allowed to marry your wife's sister. Whether it's your wife's sister, uh, they both share the common father, or they both share the common si- uh, mother, they're prohibited. You're not allowed to marry your wife's sister. So the Gemara says, Menalan. How do I know that? So the Gemara says, Yolof Ma'achoisai. We learn it out from your regular sister. You're not allowed to have relations with your own sister. And there the Torah says outright that your sister includes whether you share a common father whether you share a common mother. It doesn't have to be that you share both parents. So ma'achoiso, just like the Isser, to, to have relations with your sisters, whether it's your fa- they share you share a common father or whether you share a common mother. So also your wife's sister is a situation that even if you share just of one parent, you're also on your wife's sister if they share one parent. So the Gemara asks the question, why don't we learn your wife's sister from your aunt? Your father's brother's wife, as I said to you, but which brother? The only brother he has from his, that, that your father and his brother share a common father. But if you share a common mother, you're not prohibited on that wife. That's a shniya. But you're not permitted. So in other words, so the question is, why are you, achais ishto, you learning from achaisoi? Let us learn it out from daidasoi, from your aunt. Ma daidasoi, your aunt, your father's brother's wife, min ha'av It's your father's brothers from the same father, but not. it's not the iser is not from your father's brother from the same mother. Afkan, so also say, achais ishto only applies, min ha'av, only if your wife's sister is, they share this common father, v'loy not the common mother. So, so how do you know you learn from, uh, how do you, how would you know is applied, uh, is learned from regular, is learned from uh, your sister and not from the aunt. So Gemara says, Mistavra, it makes more sense. I would have learned the wife's sister from your regular sister. Why? They both, your, your wife's sister, your wife is like your body, right? So your wife's sister is a relative of yourself, right? So your wife's sister is like a relative of yourself. And your, your own sister is a relative of yourself. So therefore, I'd rather compare Achois Ishtoi to Achoisoi. So just like Achois is by Beimena Beimena, so also Achois Ishtoi is Beimena Beimena. So the Gemara says, Adarab, let's just say the opposite. I'd rather learn Achois Ishtoi Midoi Dosoi from your aunt. Why? I learn how does your wife's sister become usher? Only because you got married to your wife. So therefore, and how does your wife, how does your aunt become usher to you? It's only because your father's brother got married to this woman. So they more similar. It's, it's less similar to Achoisai. So Ella says the Gemara, Ella, we learn achos ishtoi me eishis ach. Eishis ach is your, the brother, your, the, the wife of your brother, Yalfina. Your, your officer on your brother's wife, whether you, your brother is, 
you share a common father or a common mother. And this is really aligns itself very similarly to Achois Yishtoi. The Shekane Dover Ayadei Kedushin, your wife's brother only became Osir because he made Kedushin with that lady. Ukroi the Atzmai, and it's relative, it's your relative because it's your brother. So therefore, here's the bottom line. How do I know Achois Ishtoi, your wife's sister, applies Beimina Av, Beimina Aim? Because you learn it out from Aishas Ach, from your wife, from your brother's wife. So now the Gemara asks a question: Aishas Ach Gufa Minolan. How do you know your brother's wife is Osir? Whether Beimina Av, Beimina Aim. How do you know your brother's wife is Osir to you? Whether you share a common father or a common mother with that brother. The Tanya we learned in a Brisa. Ervas Aishas Achicha Loisagali. The Torah says, "Don't marry." Don't have uh, relations with your brother's wife. Beiman Av says the Brisa. Beiman Aim. Whether it's your brother from the father or you share a common mother, you can't have relations. Ata Oimis says the Brisa asks itself. Beiman Av, Beiman Aim. Or Yeno, maybe not so. El Min Av, Loy Min Aim. Maybe it's only if you share a common father and not if you share a common mother. Vidinhu, and that would be something uh, you can figure out on your own. Chi of Khan. We have a uh, oh, so the Gemara says vidinhu. I would say no. It's logical to say that you have to share both. Chi of Khan here you're not allowed to yeah you prohibited from having relations with the, your brother's wife the chi of ba'choisa and you prohibited to have relations with your sister ma'choisa just like your sister beimina ea beimina aim whether it's your father or your mother you always usher with your with your sister with your sister even if no matter who you share. Afghans, also by your brother's wife, it doesn't matter what type of brother it is, whether from a, you share a common father or a common mother, you're prohibited from having relations with your brother's wife. So the Gemara, the Bryce says, no, maybe I'll say, let's go to the other uh, fork in the road and say, the Torah says you're not allowed to have relations with your brother's wife. And the Torah also says you can't have relations with your aunt. Ma Dosa, your aunt, your father's brother's wife, is only us to you, Minhaav. Only if you if it's your father's brother, they share a common father. Veloy Minaim, not from the mother. So Afkan, so also over here, by your brother's wife, Minhaav, Veloy Minaim. Let's say that it's only us or your brother's wife, only if you share a common father, not if you share a common mother. So the Gemara says, no. Nira Lemi Daima. Let us let us see. I have two choices. Aishas Ach could be compared to a sister, and Aishas Kach could be compared to the aunt. So let's see, who is it most similar to? Don and Kravi Atzmai, Mikravi Atzmai. Your brother is also to you. It's your, it's your, you know, it's your relative. So, and that's most similar to Kravi Atzmai, to, to another relative of yours, with his, which is your sister. Just like your sister's us to you, Beimena Av, Beimena Aim. So the, your brother's wife is learned out from the, your sister that's Beimena Av, Beimena Aim, if it, no matter what type of brother it is. Baal don't prove it to me, Doidosai, you, your aunt, Shakroi Ve Av, because it takes two steps to be us to your aunt. First of all, you have to have a father, and your father has to have a brother, and that brother has to have a wife. So it's like not such a relative, it's a relative of your father. Or maybe no, let's go the other direction. Your sister is also by itself. There's no kedushin involved to make the sister also. Donan, let us let us compare Dover Shayide Kedushin, Aishas Ach, which comes through marriage, me Dover Shayide Kedushin, to another Arayas, which only comes through marriage, which is your aunt. Baal Techiach, and don't compare it to Achoisai, don't compare it to your sister. She is a bomb, which is an Issa that comes by itself. So where the Gemara is holding at this moment is how do I know Aishas Ach, your brother's wife? It doesn't matter what type of a brother. How do you know that? So the Gemara says, Talmud Laimer. So the Gemara says, I have a Pasik. And that Pasik, an extra Pasik by not marrying your brother's wife, it says it's not having relations. Erbas Achichahi. Uh, don't have relations with your brother's wife because it's your brother's erva. It's it's a it's a iser erva from your brother. 
So this extra posik is beimena al beimena aim. This extra posik is telling you that no matter what, whether the you share a common father, you share a common mother, it's aser. So now the Gemara asks the ema. Let us say, Let's say there are two psokim over here. Two psokim that says you're not allowed to have relations with your brother's wife. Let's say both psukim teach you that what brother are we talking about? Min ha'av. If you all share a common fa- father, that wife of your brother is also. Now, and why do I need two psukim to tell me your brother's wife is also? Chada, one possible will tell you that your brother's wife is also the yesh lo bonam b'chayabala. To teach you a scenario when your brother gave a divorce and he's still alive, you can't marry that lady. He, when he has, when she has children, if she has children, you, and she's and, the, and your brother, the husband's still alive, you can't marry your brother's wife. The Chada, in another scenario, another pasuk teaches you that you're not going to marry your brother's wife. The ain labonim b'chayabala, that when your brother has no children, now normally there would be yibum here, but if he's still alive, in other words, he just divorced her. That's what the pasuk is teaching me that yibum only applies when your brother died. But when he's still alive, even if and he divorced her and he doesn't have children, you're still not permitted to marry your brother's wife. So I need two psukim about Aishas ach min ha'av. So the Gemara says, what the second pasuk teaches you ain lo bonim bala, ain lo bonim that he, she doesn't have children and her husband's still alive. Ah midrav huna nafka. I learned that out. From Rav Huna. And we had yesterday and yes, yesterday's daf that says the Torah compares Aishas Ach, Aishas Achiv Nidihi. The Torah says something about an Aishas Ach that it's like a Nida. And therefore, and therefore a Nida, just like a Nida, <laughs> as long as she's still around, as long as the Nida is still there, you're not permitted to have relations with a Nida. So also, as long as the brother is still around, it's Usr. So back. So we're back to square one. We have an extra posik by Aishas Ach. So that extra posik teaches you that it applies not only by Aishas Ach Mina Av, but it also applies by Aishas Ach Mina Aim. So the Gemara is still not satisfied. Again, I have two psukim that tell you you're not allowed to marry your brother's wife. The Ema, let us say, let's say the Torah only says that brother's wife is only usher to you only if you share a common father. But why? One teaches you that you're not allowed to have relations with your brother's wife if he had children and he's still alive. In other words, he divorced her and, and she has children with her. You can't marry her. You can't have relations with her. The Chad then, one Pasek, is the Yesh Lobonim La'acha Mises Pala. When she has children after the husband died. Let, after, let's say your brother, the brother died and he had children, you can't marry her. The, the, you can't marry your brother's wife. So, because she wouldn't fall to Yibam. So the Gemara says, I don't need a Pasuk to tell me that you can't marry your brother's wife after he dies, if he had children, because the only time the Torah gave you a heter, the only time the Torah told you to do the mitzvah of Yibam is only when he had no children. So I don't need a Pasuk to tell me the opposite. That when he does have children, it's also. Because mid the Omar Rahmana, since the Torah says, Sha'in law bonum mutares, that only time you could do Yibim is when your brother had no children. Then it's mutter. Ha yesh law bonum, but if he does have children, asura, that would be also. So that's obvious that when he, your brother had left over children and you're not allowed to do, you're not allowed to marry your brother's wife. So the Gemara says, not so. The Dilma, I would have misinterpreted the whole mitzvah of Yibim. Ain law bonum, when, when your brother doesn't have children and died, asura la alma. It's, she's not permitted to marry anybody in the world, but she's permitted to marry the Yavim. But but if she does have children, then she's permitted to marry the world and she's permitted to marry the Yavim. It's, it's optional. It's like almost she's permitted to marry the Yavim when she has children. But the, the addition by having children, she's also permitted to marry somebody else, not her, not her husband's brother. I might have thought what the mitzvah of the Yibim is like this. If there's no children here, he died without children. Mitzvah. Then it's a mitzvah to the Yavim, to the brother, to marry his, his brother's wife. But yesh Labanim, but if she had children, it's optional. He doesn't have to marry his brother's wife, but he's permitted. I would have said, I would have said, if there's no children, yes, then he's supposed to marry her. 
or yesh lobanim, but if he does have children, you don't get a, a big avera for it. You only be over a mitzvah to say. V'lav habo meklal say say. The Torah is telling you that when she does have children, the Torah implies, implies that only when they don't have children marry this lady. But if she does have children, we can, we can infer that you're not supposed to marry this lady. But that only makes it a positive commandment. So I, I wouldn't know that there's a negative commandment for, for marrying your brother's wife if he left over children. That's why I need to psuk him by Ervis to tell you not to marry your brother's wife. So one Pusik will tell you that when he doesn't have children and he's still alive, and one children that even after he dies, if he had left over children, you're not supposed to marry her. So the Gemara says, Ksiv uh, achiv gila. The Torah says that another Pusik, that don't marry your brother's wife, three psukim. So basically, I have two psukim to teach you that your brother's wife is also for you, beimena av, beimena aim. So I have two psukim, I have actually three psukim that tell you not to marry your brother's wife. One gives you a love that if your brother left over children, you're not allowed to marry your brother's wife, even after he died. And one and two psukim are left over to tell you that it doesn't matter what type of brother it was, whether you shared a common father or a common mother, his wife will be also to you. One more point, the Ema, says the Gemara, now the Gemara asks a side question. Let us say, that if you're telling me that Aishas Ach and is also to you, whether it's from the mother's side, whether it's from the father's side, so we always had throughout this Masechta that Yibam only applies to if to a, a woman that you that you shared a common to the to the brother that you shared a common father. So now the Gemara is asking the Ema, let us say, Aishas Ach Minaim, your brother's wife. When you share a common mother, should be the same halacha of yibam keishes ach minav, like the eishes ach from your father. That just like your brother from your father, ma eishes ach minav, the brother's wife from your father. There's a mitzvah of yibam laach amisus bali yashari. After the brother dies, after the uh, the person's brothers died, he's permitted to marry that woman. Af eishes ach minayin. So also, I would have thought that the brother's wife, when you share a common mother. Should also be also should be also permitted after the husband dies. It should also be permitted. In other words, how do you know that the mitzvah of yibam only applies in case you share a common father? How do you know? Maybe also it applies when you share a common mother, and even if you don't share a common father. Rashi points out over here that although. We learned that it applies from your father because you have a gzei reshava achva achva mebnei Yaakov, just like the sons of Yaakov all shared a common father, and it says ki yeshu achim yachtov. So we have a, a, a gzei reshava that show that it applied that only by the father. I could say Rashi says no. What the Gemara is saying is yes, you'll have the gzei reshava that the mitzvah of yibam applies if you share a common father, but maybe if you share a common mother, it's optional. It's not a mitzvah, but it could be optional. So answers the Gemara, Amakra, he, your brother's wife, he remains your brother's wife, no matter what happens. And it's always going to be Aser. So from here, we learn the, here are the rules. The mitzvah of Yibim only applies to your brother's wife if you share only if you share a common father, not if you just share a common mother. And, but the Isser, your brother's wife, you know, if he has children, always remains, whether you sh- whether it's a brother from the same father or a brother from the same mother. New Gemara. Now, this is what we learned yesterday. I want to point it out on the screen over here. We learned yesterday, the Torah gives you last week's Parsha. This was the Parsha's Achrei, which we read in, the, in, in Shul last week. The Torah says, if you do all these arayas, kikol mikol If you do all these abominable acts, the nichrasu you're gonna you're gonna get a premature death. So that's what the Gemara says. So all the arayas have a certain courage to it, a premature death. So the Gemara is now gonna ask, then if so, why does it say in the Pomish in this week's Sedra, Parshas Kedoshim, where if you marry your si- if you have relations with your sister, it says Ve'ish Achayikach Esachoy. So if you take your sister, okay, Bas Aviv Bas Whether you share a common sister from your father or from your mother, 
And it's odd. The Torah says this is, you would think it's kindness. Chesed who? Is this kindness? When you're having relations with your sister? No. The Torah says you get kares. Why does the Torah have to write kares over here when the Torah wrote already that all arayas get kares? That's the Gemara's question. Why does the Torah write specifically that a, a sister gets kares? Answers the Gemara to Rabbi Yechanan, to teach you the teaching of Rabbi Yechanan. The Amr Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan says, Shim Ason Kulam Behemes Achas. If you person got went through all the arayas and he had relations with all the arayas with one lapse, in other words, he didn't know their arayas, he never learned Chumich in his life, and he had arayas with his sister, his aunt, his, his brother's wife, everything. That teaches you that you get and uh, you have to bring a carbon chatas from each and every one. In other words, not that you say, oh, I made one lapse. So now that I learned Chumash, I only bring one carbon. For every time you had a relations, you had relations with any of the Arayas, you have to bring its own separate carbon. And that's why the Torah specifically says, just like your sister, you get karis. And if you do it by mistake, you get you get chatas. So every one of them is has its own is unique. And therefore, even though you had one lapse, you would have to bring uh, about, you know, I think 30, uh, I don't know what, how many Arayas are there, but many uh, different chatois of each one of them. So the Gemara says, Ulu Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak has a, Rabbi Yitzchak learned something else from that Pasuk. Um, he learned, the Omar, Kol Chayavi Krisis Baklal Hoya, the Loma Yatsus of Kores Bachois. Rabbi Yitzchak taught us that the reason why Kores was written by your sister, Ladune Bekores Veloibe Malkus. He says that the, it's teaching you that you can't give Malkus for your sister. In other words, there is an opinion that says that B'dyeved, you can give Malkus for somebody who's high of Karis, and then you won't die young. So Rabbi Yitzchak said, no, the Torah said Karis by Achoyse to teach you that the only punishment for these Arayas is Karis, premature death. So he learned something from that Pasik. So where would he know this idea, Lechalek Manolan? How do you know? How do you know lechalik that you get? Uh, you have to bring a carbon for each and every one of the arayas if you did the anavera with one lapse. So the Gemara says nafkile. He would learn it from somewhere else. El isha benidas tumasa lechayev. I'll call isha the isha. The Torah says el isha. The Torah could have said don't have relation when your wife is anida. Why is the Torah said the woman when she's uh, has a anida you can't have relations otherwise you get karis. So to teach you that every Arias is a separate woman and that a person who had one lapse did not know anything about Arias and had relations with every single one of the Arias, he can't just get away with one carbon. Every single woman gets their own carbon. Now the Gemara asks another question. We just had, again, the Torah gave you a general rule that all the Arias get Karis. So why does the Torah say that there's a special by the Dosai, by your aunt, the cause of Rahman Ariram you Lamali? Why does the Torah say that by your aunt, you, you die young? Obviously, it's all the Arias. Why does the Torah single out by Daidosa? So by your aunt. So the Gemara says, Look at the Rabbah. This teaches you another thing. What does it mean to die young? It's not that just that you're going to die young. Ariram teaches you that Chorus includes, Chorus includes that you, you're going to die without children, that your children are going to die out. And not only that, what we're going to see here is that the Pesach says it twice, that not only if you, let's say, did this Arias, and then you had children, so that children is going to, you're going to have to bury that children, and then you're going to die young. And if you didn't have children, and you're going to have children after you did this Arias, so then those children will die first, and then you'll die. That's what the Gemara says. The Rabbi Rami, Rabbi asked the contradiction. See, the Pesach says, Aririm you. That aririm means you're going to die bereft of your children. That means you're going to bury the children if you have uh, did arayas. Uksiv in the pasuk says aririm yamusu that you have children now. You have children even if you were didn't have children now, and you're going to have children later on. Those children are going to die. But from the pasuk is mashma that your previous children will not die. Okay, said what's what's the pasuk telling you? How do you resolve these psukim? Yesh loy bonim. If you have children, koivram, you're going to bury them. Ein loy bonim. If you have no children, hoylech ariri, you're not going to have children. And if you're going to have children, they're going to die again. They're going to predecease you. The itzrach lemichtav aririm you. The Torah had to write aririm you. The itzrach lemichtav amirim yamisu. 
you have that you'll that you will be reft of your children that you had, and that you'll be reft of your children in the future. The Ikas of Rahman Maria, you if the Torah just write, you'll be lose your children that you had before the Arayas. Havamina, I would have thought, Adhati. Up until the children that you had until the sin, those are gonna die. Avo mechete but the children that you're gonna have from the sin and onwards, loy, they won't die. Cause of Rahmana, the Torah writes, I rerim yamusu, that you, that you, they're gonna make sure that you die without children. The e cause of Rahmana Rirum Yamisu, if the Torah says that you're gonna die without children, Havamina mechete ve'ela. The Torah is referring to those children that you're going to plan on having after you did the Avera. Avamikara, but the children that you had prior to the Avera will not die. Loi, Sricha, that's that's why we need the, these two psukim. So again, these psukim over here, um, which talk about here, this is Kiyiskev and Stoidasai Ariram Yomisu. It tells you if you're going to sleep with your aunt, you're going to Ariram Yomisu, you're going to die, you're going to lose your children that you're going to have. And then the Torah also wrote, so if you sleep with a, your brother's wife, then a rerim you, you're going to lose the children that you already have. So that's why I need two psukim. New Gemara. As I told you before, that the Gemara now is discussing what is called intercourse. So the, we learned in our Mishnah that uh, ha'ora, 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 even by Kores, by all those Averis, like uh, having relations with your wife, your brother, your, your wife's sister, right? So even with just Ha'ara, an, an initial intercourse, you didn't complete the intercourse, uh, okay, you didn't release, that is called already your Chayv Kores. But Ha'ara, the Chayv Lava Menolam, how do I know that the, on, on those Arias, not really Arias, that those women that you're not allowed to marry, you don't get a chorus, but are only a chayvei lav. How do you know that ha'ara, an initial intercourse, is uh, that's also the prohibition? In other words, for example, the Torah says the Torah says you're not allowed to um, a um, uh, you're not allowed to marry anybody from the seven nations. So it's a iser lav, right? An amoni. So how do you know that? And you don't get chorus for that. But if you have relations, how do you know the beginning of the intercourse is already the the iser? So the Gemara says, Mid the Gali Rahmana Shikhba Zara Gabi Shifra Ruva. The Torah says you have to complete the intercourse when you have relations to be usur on a Shifcha Kharufa. A Shifcha Kharufa is a Goyesha maid that's designated, that's married or engaged to uh, to an Evid Ivri, a, a Jewish slave. The Torah says there, in order to be Chayev, you have to have regular intercourse. Michlal, from we can deduce the Chayove Lavim, a regular Chayve Lavim. Baha'ara, just uh, an initial intercourse already is Asr, any other Chai Lav. So the Gemara says, other Rabbah, maybe just the opposite. <clears throat> Since the Torah told you, by Chai creases, by severe Arayas, the Isser starts from initial intercourse, maybe I can assume, by, uh, by the, uh, those women that are prohibited to you through a chayve lav, maybe you have to do a complete bia, finish the bia completely. Then Rav Shish says, then if that's the case, in Cain, lishta karab shifcha harufa. Why does the Torah have to tell you that by a, a, a shifcha harufa uh, that you have to complete the intercourse, complete the intercourse? Every every chayve lav and lady you have to complete. So therefore, I know that Chayvei Lava, even Ha'ara, is already awesome. Okay, but that's, but how do you know that a, that is by a Chayvei Lava that's universal? Hara, the Chayvei Lava, the Kahuna Menolan, how do you know you're not allowed to have an initial intercourse, let's say a coin marrying a Grusha? How do you know that intercourse there refers to Hara initially? How do you know? So Gemara says, Asya kicha kicha. We learn that Xer Shava from Kicha Kicha. It says that you're not ish ashiika chasakhoi. So you're not allowed to marry your sister. You're not allowed to have relations with your sister. And it also says by a chaive lava kuna, lo you kahu, don't take them. So we see that we have Xer Shava, just like by your sister, it's hara. So also by by a coin, it's also hara. So the Gemara asks the Chaive Esam and Olam, those women that are also to you on a chayove essay. Not a love. It's not karis. A chayve essay. What woman is also to you in an essay? 
a mitzri. The Torah says, don't uh, only let a mitzri in to marry a Jewish man, only the third generation mitzri. So how do you know? So it's only an iser assay. How do you know hara is aser over there? We go to Amit Beis. So the Mara says, asya bia bia. That we learn out from bia bia from chayve lavin. You see, it says by mitzri, dar shlisha yovoy bekal Hashem. And we learn out, Xavier Shova, lo yovoy mamzer. Bekal Hashem. So just like the by Chayvei Lavam, we already said it's Hara. So also by Chayvei Essay, it's also Hara. Now the Gemara says Yavama Lashik Menola. Um, uh, how do you know that a Yavama that fell to Yibam? They didn't do Yibam Machalitza. How do you know if a stranger wants to have relations with her? How do you know Hara is also there? So the Gemara says, what's the Isser of a Yavama to, for the street before Chalitza? If it's a lav, lav, then it's like every other lav. Essay, essay. If, it, if it's a regular essay, it's like an essay. We already proved that a woman that's also um, uh, because of an essay, a woman that's also because of a lav, a woman that's also because of chorus, it's not, you don't have to do a complete bia. Even her raw, an initial uh, bia is also. So now the Gemara says, okay, fine. This is the big question. And this is why it's very important here. How do you know a Yavam to Yavama? How do you know and, uh, that they can do Kenyan just with an initial hara intercourse, not with the complete Bia? So the Gemara says, Asyam Bia Bia. I learned in Exei Shava, Bia Bia. It says, uh, Yavama Yavai. Uh, the Gemara Pasuk says, um, uh, it says a Pasuk like this. It says, Yavama Yavai Aleha. And it says, by by Isha Labala, um, uh, it also says uh, that in a regular um, a regular bia by a regular marriage also is kind of behara. So now the Gemara says, okay, how do you know that Isha Labala Manola? How do I know that a man could be kind of his wife, acquire his wife, not with a complete bia, just with an initial bia hara. That I know Asya Kicha Kicha. That I know from Kikach Ish. Pasuk says Kikach Ish Isha. Ubala, the Torah says you can when you initially take a, a woman and you do have relations with her, and you learn it out from uh, uh, from Isser Kares by your sister. It says Lo Yikachu. Now the Gemara asks a couple of more questions, and then we'll we'll finish up over here. Amarava, the Torah says like this. So now we know that when the Torah says don't have relations, it means not a complete relations, a complete intercourse, but it means just even initial intercourse called hara. So then, the, then the, we have three questions. Amarava, Lomeli the Kos of Rachmana Shich Vezera. Why does the Torah tell you you complete the intercourse b'shifcha harufa? And why does the Torah say Shich Vezera be'eshes ish? The Torah says that when you have relations, when a person has relations with an eshes ish, a married woman, it, it has it, it, a complete intercourse. Why? The Torah, we already told you that you don't need a Shich Vezera type of, a release type of intercourse. And Shich Vezera the Soita. Why do you need to Torah tell you that by a soita, a soita is a woman that her husband accuses her, is accusing her for sleeping with another man, and he has to warn her, I don't want you to sleep with another man. Uh, in order for a woman to be usher to her husband, she's like a regular Aishas Ish, even if, if he, she doesn't have a, a, a complete Bia with the other man. She's also even with Hara. So why does the Torah write the word Sheikh Bazera by the Psukim of Saita, by Psukim of Eshesis, and by Psukim of Shifcha Harufa. So the Gemara says like this The Shifcha Harufa Kida Amram. To teach you Shifcha Harufa, that's what we said. To teach you that other Chaybe Lavim, you don't need a complete intercourse, you need Harav. Only Shifcha Harufa is the exception. The Eshes Ish, what does the Torah say that Eshes Ish? Prat Limshamish Meis. The Torah is trying to tell you that. And just, it doesn't, even with hara, even with initial intercourse, that's also. But you have to have an erection. If you have the organ that's dead and that goes into somebody else's wife, then it's no, there's no iser, ashes, is over there. So the Gemara says, that's what you learn from the Sheikh Vazera that's written by Ashes Ish. So the Gemara says, honey, that makes perfect sense. That if you, uh, if you do relations with a dead organ, with no erection in any of the arise, you're in, you're in a potter. El the Yomachai, but according to that opinion, there's another opinion that says that it doesn't matter if your organ is dead. Uh, you're still chayev. So what does Sheikh Vazera teach you? Ma'ikl what are you going to learn from the Sheikh Vazera 
that it says by Aishas is. El Prat, fascinating Gemara. The Quran needs to tell you that your only mechaev when you have relations with a married woman is only if she's a, alive. But if she's dead, if she's dead, um, then there's no Issa to have relations with. Prat l'meshamesh mesha. If she died, there's no Issa. I would have walked away thinking, a person's wife is called his wife even after she died. Because we see the coin that with the Torah says that the coin should be metama, he's allowed to go to the funeral and bury his wife after she died. That's what the Torah basically says in Parshas Amar. So I would have thought if she still called your wife after she died, I might think that if someone has relations with the woman after she died, a strange man has relations with a woman after she died, he, she, that, that man should be chayev because he's having relations with a married woman. That's what the Torah says, only a type of relations that could potentially produce a, um, a child, but not with a dead woman. Now, the Saita Lamali, and one more, we'll go to Amash Mool. The Saita Lamali, what does the Torah say by a Saita that in order to be usher, you have to make sure that you 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 warn the your the wife, the man warns his wife, don't have relations with this person. A, a shikhva zera type of relation. What does that teach you? Like a Titania, like we learned in the Brahsa, Shikhva Zera, you have to warn the man has to warn his wife not to have uh, relations with another man, Prat Ladava Akhar. He, he's not warned his wife not to have the other type of relations. My Dava Akha, Amar Avsheshis, Prat Lishakine Losh Loikidarka. He should not warn her. That's not called a sight if you're warning your wife not to have atypical, atypical relations with a woman with with a, with a strange man. That's not called a sota. You have to warn her that she should not have a normal relations, not an atypical relation, which is uh, like shleikadaka through the back, or whatever. Amale, so the rabbi, the rabbi says that's not true. Mishkeve isha kasev. The Torah says mishkeve isha that that you could warn your wife not to have relations with someone, whether typically or atypically, because the Torah implies two types of sleeping with a woman. Ella Omarova, Rava says, Prat Lishakina Law Derech Evorim. That you, you, if you warn your wife that the, the Isra of Saita, not allowed to be with her husband. Again, once a person warns his wife not to be with her husband, not to go with this man, not to be alone with this man, and she does, she becomes usher to him, right? Until she drinks the Sota waters. But if he warned her, not, not that he didn't tell her, don't have sex with that person. Don't go into the room. He says, don't have like, um, like, you know, type of uh, relations that uh, not, no penetration, just hugging and, and bumping into each other. Derek Averim. So that's not called a, a, uh, that's not called warning your wife. Amalei Abai, Abai says, that's obvious. That's not called warning your wife. Preach us our Sarah Would the Torah let a man Asr preaches to his wife. In other words, it's obvious that that's not called warning your wife uh, of, of not having relations. If just, just that's a, that's a preaches. Ella, the Gemara says, Prat l'shekina lo benishika. You warned your wife that, okay, instead of warning your wife not to have a full relations, you warned your wife to have, the man warned his wife not to have his, uh, his organ touch her organ and just kissing so, so that's if that's the case, so that that's what the Torah says. So that that's not called a good warning, and then so the waters would not apply in that scenario. So Gemara says, "Hanicha leman diyama haora zu hachnasas Torah." That would make sense. That that what is called haora, we what is called initial intercourse. That means hachnasas atara, which means you you penetrate with the corona into the into the into the woman's into the woman's vagina. So there, that's called hara. So just touching on the outside, but without penetration, that's not called a bia. And that's why the Torah says that's not called a warning by a saita. El but there's an opinion that we're going to learn tomorrow, zunashika, that, that bia is not only a penetration, but even touching the male organ with the female organ, that's called a bia. Ma'ikalamema, so what's the Torah telling you? Shikhvazera by a woman, by, by a sota. So you can't learn that. So the Gemara says, Really, I would think that the Torah is talking about a scenario that 
you a man warned his wife not to bump around with somebody with somebody else, not to have relations. And I would have thought that the mitzvah of drinking soda waters would apply in that scenario too. I would think that the whole point of drinking soda waters has to do with what disturbs the husband. And therefore, the husband can warn his wife not to bump around with somebody. And, and if she does, she would have to drink the soda waters. And he's concerned about that. Kamash Malam, the Chomish says that no, the, the only time soda waters apply is if the man warned his wife not to have relations with that other man. But what's called relations? That re- relations could be nishika, could we be the touching of the organs? Doesn't necessarily mean a penetration, but it has to be something of the nature of shikh vazera. And that's why the Torah wrote the, the word shikh vazera by sota. And we discuss why it wrote it by, by Eshish Ish and why the Torah wrote it by Shifcha Harufa. Okay, we're going to discuss more about this hara tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, of what is called uh, initial. Uh, uh, initial Tashmish. Okay. Excellent.